Welcome to the Heart Centered Sales Leader Podcast on webtalkradio.net. I'm your Heart Centered Sales Leader and host, Connie Whitman. Thanks for joining us today. Now, I hope every week as you listen to the show that you feel my movement that I'm making out there of changing that word sales to something, you know, that's icky and sleazy and pushy and in your face, that paradigm shift over to really we should be selling and communicating and building relationships from this place of love, care, and respect, not that icky feeling. So I hope my guests and I are providing some tools and strategies to help you do that. And I really hope I'm helping you shift your mindset. Again, so you go out there with courage and with um, strength that what you're offering is needed in the world. Now, also, if you're loving the show, please (laughs) rate, rate it, subscribe, and write a little review. I love to read them, and I love feeling the love. Now, my motivational quote today is, of course, by the wonderful Brian Tracy, and Brian says, Leaders are innovative, entrepreneurial, and future oriented. They focus on getting the job done. Now, is your team working from home like so many, and have you been able to shift your skills to accommodate this new landscape of business and leadership? And I I think maybe even the bigger question might be, are you prepared for what might be yet to come? And are you curious and innovative enough to continue to shift your sales now um, to remain relevant? Now, my guest today, of course, I have an expert on this topic, my good friend and wonderful expert, Cheryl Ellis. Now, Cheryl is the author of Becoming Deliberate, Changing the Game of Leadership from the Inside Out. Cheryl is the deliberate leadership expert and culture coach. She's certified um, high performance coach and founding member of John Maxwell's team of coaches, trainers, and speakers. Cheryl also is a certified facilitator in the five behaviors of cohesive teams, everything disc, one of my favorite tools out there, productive conflict and PXT select. She's recently joined the faculty at Eckerd College's leadership development Institute which is affiliated with the Center for Creative Leadership. I hope I got that right, Cheryl. And Cheryl has helped countless leaders achieve greater success. She specializes in helping growth-minded business owners and executives build those cohesive, high-performing teams. So Cheryl, thank you. And thanks for being back on the show. Is this fifth time, sixth time? I don't even remember now. You know, I I don't even know, Connie, but, um, you know, it's so much fun every time we get together. So I'm looking forward to our conversation. And I and I just love the you know the way you introduced this and and understanding the importance of leadership um, in sales and in this really unprecedented time that we find ourselves in. So those skills become even more important and uh, to focus on. So I'm looking forward to chatting with you about that today. Yeah, and even if you're you know a business owner and it's it's just you, there's still self leadership skills that you need to develop because you're we're more isolated than we were, and that's a dangerous place to be because opportunity certainly is missing you, but your own growth, personal growth, I think can be limited as well. So we really want to get out there and and become that those courageous leaders um, in the world. So uh, I love I love our conversations, and I just always love having you on because I think we we share some really good content and some actionable tips that people could execute immediately after listening to the show. So for me, that's what it's about, right? Action creates results. And I know you're the same way. Let's get the results, man. That's what we're here to do, right? Let's let's put good things out there. So um, it, it has been an interesting year since last we connected in 2020. What were your takeaways as a leader and, and really being the deliberate leader that you are? What are your takeaways from the past year? Well, you know, I would say that first and foremost, the importance of mindset. Now, Hmm. I've always been, I've talked about mindset for years, and I think about um, having a deliberate leadership mindset. I think about having a leadership mindset. But, um, you know, this year, this past year, it's been even more important than ever, because what I saw, and I'm sure you saw this too, was a lot of people that engage in what I think of as thinking, thinking, you know, like Hmm. everything stinks, um, the world's you know, coming to an end, Um, you know, when will this be over? When can we return to normal? And just a lot of negative thinking about focusing on all the stuff that's wrong with this picture Mm -hmm. and none of the stuff that's right with this picture. And if you really ask people to think about the last year, you know, there's some good 
things that came out of the past year, some really good things. Great. And we've learned some really important lessons. And so I just like to, I certainly personally like to focus on that side of the coin. And I think that what I realized that it, it was probably more critical than ever, because I think the people that struggled the most were the ones that were, um, you know, just had just such a negative attitude about everything that was going on. So, and I think that people that thrived on the other hand, just kind of got to work and said, how do we make this work? And whether it's on their own as a business owner or with their team, they just put their heads down and figured out how to, how to get through it. And some of them have just had incredible growth in the past year. So, you know, it's certainly possible, you know, along with that, I just think things like, that that I've always thought about, like the need to be uh, the need for agility in mm. leadership, you know, mm. and, and the need for resilience personally, you know, those kind of things came, became even more important than ever. Uh, I found my, myself talking about that with my clients and um, with my audiences a lot more than usual. So helping people focus on those on those things, if they hadn't been focusing on them in the past, they certainly need to start now. It's really true. And it's funny, before we started, right, we were talking, we both were part of an anthology um, that hit international bestselling, um, which was fun to do a project like that with you, right, and be part of that, you know, new group of people that we were able to meet. And it was funny, because Cheryl said to me before, she goes, you know, in less than a year, you hit international bestselling author three times. And I kind of looked at her and I go, you know, I really haven't told people that we forget, right? To, and and I, I guess I am humble. I, I don't go out there, oh, look at me. I'm so great. Um, yeah, I am great, right? But I don't go out broadcasting that because I just pulled up my bootstraps and thought, what do I need to do? And opportunity said, hey, you want to do this? Hey, you want to do that? And I was like, sure, I'll be part of that because I had a little bit more time than running around doing all the live training and live speaking events, right? Cheryl, you, I know the same thing. So all of a sudden I was in my office more. I had more time to kind of think and go, oh, I could work on that project and be part of that. That opportunity would never have, might have found me, I would have turned it down because I would have been too busy running around, right, in my business instead of building my business. And I think business owners do that a lot too, Cheryl. And I was falling into that um, bad habit, I'm going to say. So last yeah. year helped me to reset and become more agile than I had been because of COVID and that lockdown, I rethought my entire business strategy. And I know you and I, before we started recording, we were talking about shifting our business models so that we can perform and, and exceed and accelerate in this, in this new world because it's here to stay. This isn't going away. Um, the, now that we've tapped into this virtual realm and the level of productivity productivity, I think that comes with it. I think a lot of businesses are going to think twice before saying, oh, no, no, we're going all back to live again. I think we're going to see a nice hybrid blend. So I, I do think that the shifts that you and I have made, again, that agility, I love that word agility, um, as leaders, I think are, are really big. So what were some of the, the key impacts you noticed on your clients and other business associates, you know, associates that, as you were out there doing, you know, what you do? Yeah, well, you know, I think that um, you know, some really struggled for sure, yeah. and then others um, really thrived. And, and I think a lot of it came down to their ability to uh, adapt, mm -hmm. you know, to recognize that we have a different kind of normal right now. Mm -hmm. And how am I going to adapt to that? How am I still going to get my team really focused on that? Um, you know, how do I make sure I know what our strengths are and how do I leverage those strengths? Yeah. Um, and then how do I meet those challenges head on? So um, I, I think that the impact on, um, on people that I saw was um, they just had to get better at the basics. In other words, you had to communicate more than you think. And you also had That's to true. be more tuned into the individual needs of your team. True. Because one thing I really noticed, and I'm sure you noticed this too, is like, you know, we had this sense of we're all going through this together. And that's true. We're all in this together. But in a way, we're all in this differently because everybody had a different kind of impact based on their own particular situation. So, true. I mean, there were people, for example, that were home 
you know, a couple people working from home, maybe a couple kids um, schooling from home, um, trying to manage all of that and not get overwhelmed, I think was, was really difficult for some. So I saw a lot of people that were really overwhelmed with, with everything that was on their shoulders. So, um, and, and I think when that happens, we have a tendency to put things aside that are nice to do, but they're not urgent. Yeah. So, you know, the example, the example that I think of sometimes when I think about, you know, Stephen Covey and the urgent versus the important, you know, it's not urgent to exercise every day, but it's important to do it. And it's important for the long run. So what happens when we get into a situation like we did last year is we, we end up kind of focusing on the urgent and we lose sight of the important. And then before you know it, we get into some bad habits, just like, just like you said. So, you know, keeping that, keeping that in check and getting and calibrating that over and over again, I think is really important to do. Yeah. And you, you know, you mentioned the young, young families with kids at home. <clears throat> I, I give them a lot of credit. You know, my one son graduated college, my, my little guy, 21, he's not so little, but he is graduating May of this year. And my kids were big. They didn't need me. And I have a friend out in Oregon, <clears throat> my brilliant Heather uh, Pierce Campbell. She's uh she's the legal warrior website queen. She's freaking amazing. And, you know, we were talking fairly regularly and, you know, in the same network and, you know, schooling from home, trying to run a business, right, doing her law practice. Um, one of her children has a little bit of uh, autism. I, th I think it's autism. And I said to her, every, I, I don't know how you're doing it. Like, I'm sending you loving energy, my friends, because I, I just don't know how you're growing your business. And she did grow her business, you know, prioritization, the urgent she handled, but there was also that importance, right, that those priorities that that she had to do as a mom but as a business owner to her clients so um yeah overwhelm i think was big for a lot of people and i i commend all of those young business owners with with families at home so i just i did want to comment on that because i i was in awe of of what they were accomplishing and i thought like i was busy Woo! they were crazy busy right. so yeah shout out to all my young mom and and dads that are business owners as well What's the biggest challenge you think business leaders are facing now that the you know vaccine is there, things are opening up slightly? What what are we facing now for for 2021? Yeah, I still think it's this question of um, focusing on priorities. You know, identifying what the priorities are and making sure that you're doing the important things as well as the urgent things. I think that's still really important. Um, and then I think it's about maintaining momentum toward results, like, mm -hmm. you know, being real clear on what results or what goals you're trying to achieve, and then making sure that you have um, plans in place to achieve them, but that you can keep the momentum um, going and growing. And, you know, if you have a team, you know, keeping the team members really engaged with, um, you know, the, the goals and the objectives of the organization. And feeling like they're contributing and, and part of the solution and all of those things. So, you know, I just think that leadership skills in general come into a much sharper focus right now. The need for that is, is more, um, more important than ever. And I think it's still a challenge, especially if you have a virtual team or you have some kind of a hybrid where some of your people are working in a location and others are virtual and yeah. you've got these, you know, these mixtures. I think there's a lot of pluses to that, but I think it's also it also has its challenges. So I've helped people focus a lot on how to leverage the benefits of being virtual and and you know overcome the challenges of it because there's challenges, no question about it. Yeah, and and it was funny. I remember um, early on, uh, you know, March 13th. I remember the day, right? All my all my clients sent me emails saying, "Okay, that's it." We can't do any live training, of course, right? I saw it coming and we were about two months in and one of my clients, I, you know, I was reaching out regularly, not can you hire me back? That was not my intent, but truly coming from this place of service of how can I help support you? I know we are in utter chaos. I have a little time. What do you need from me? What's my zone of genius or expertise that I can help your teams? And a couple of them said, can we do some Zoom meetings with that middle management and talk about how to stay connected and how to lead in, the, in this crazy 
craziness. And just, it was so interesting. First, it was so good to see everybody, even though we were on Zoom. So that was kind of cool, a byproduct of what, what that uh, initiative was. And the feedback was so nice at the end where they were like, oh, it was so good to see everybody in one place and then to brainstorm together and realize oh, you're going through that too so that you're like they felt oh gosh i'm not alone anymore right like oh they're all going through the same thing and then i just gave some ideas on how to communicate in this new world because i had to adapt quickly right so now you i know cheryl we, i was networking internationally and just you know i was on zoom 40 hours a week you know at the prime of covid meeting new people and see where i could create that new opportunity for my new business model, right, that I was building. And some of the simple ideas that I shared, they were like, I never thought to use Zoom that way, or my people do need that. How did I miss that? Because we were all in chaos. It was hard to see with clarity. And as soon, as soon as someone said, hey, what about, they bit and they were like, oh, I'm gonna, as soon as we hang up, I'm going to do that and I'm going to implement that. So see, again, just reaching out to my clients, how can I serve you? Wonderful mm -hmm. things happened from that. So it's, it, I, I think we just have to think, I think we have to be agile. I love that word, Cheryl agile and how we think and how we we serve and i think there's there's a little bit of a shift going on what do you see as the critical skills for leading because this work from anywhere a lot of companies are giving up their real estate because the productivity went up because people weren't commuting and they were they were more focused because they weren't exhausted from the commute that production went up so they're giving up that real estate what what do you see as the new critical skills that are kind of here to stay they're not going to go away even after everything yeah. opens again well i think one of the things you know a couple of the things that emerged um i think fairly quickly was you know People were not um, equally adept at, adap at adapting, yeah. okay? And so the people that seemed to adapt um, most quickly and most easily were people who were, you know, really able to work independently. You know, some people just really depend on being surrounded by other people. Mm. And so that's really difficult when they're working on their own. Mm. So the ability to work independently was one thing. Um, along with that, I think you know, people needed to be self-starting. So, you know, they needed to use their, not only their initiative and creativity, but also their discipline mm. to, you know, stay focused and stay on task. Um, and that then in turn meant that they really need to, needed to be organized with their time, with their energy and with their attention. So those are kind of the things that I saw emerge for people in general. And I think the best leaders, um, developed even more and, and this is one of the things I was helping leaders with during the course of the year was developing their emotional intelligence yes so um, I actually have a program called agile EQ which is all about being more agile it, it, you know in the realm of emotional intelligence so that ability to read a situation and react um, appropriately to the situation and you know that's a little trickier when you have this kind of virtual world going on. Yeah. So it, it behooves leaders to kind of up the ante on, you know, learning that, you know, learning to be better, um, use their emotional intelligence more, learning to improve their emotional intelligence. Cause a lot of, it's not like, it's not like you can't increase your emotional intelligence. It, it is something you can work on, you know, becoming better at it. And I think that's a key, I think that's a key skill. I mean, certainly all the communication things and, you know, making sure that you, you create a vision and making sure that you can align people around the vision and then, you know, just regular implementation and execution, those leadership skills that you always have to do. But I think the thing that really made the difference and made the impact and made the needle move, if you will, was focusing in on that emotional intelligence and ability to, you know, help your team with those, with those other things like, self-starting and, and time management and, and organization and things like that. Yeah. And it's funny because, um, you, you, you're a disc expert, right? I'm certified in disc. I know you, you use disc a lot and depending on what your behavioral, your natural behavioral style or affinity is, you're either more emotionally intelligent or not, right? It's just, it's how we're wired. So it's funny because the, the, 
the natural emotional intelligence that oozed out of the eyes, right? And the S's that are leaders, um, they got probably more done than the D's and the C's who are usually get to the finish line, right? Get the get production, um, probably lost some grounds because that natural emotional intelligence was lacking. But I love how you said that. It doesn't matter. Everybody has the ability to learn how to be emotionally intelligent. It is a tangible skill that can be developed. So, you know, yeah. people are saying, well, that's just not how I am. That's, that's ridiculous. Then you shouldn't be leading, right? <laughs> Get out of leadership. Um, because everybody can learn how to be emotional intelligent. And I agree with you. I think going forward, that agility with the emotion, and of course you have a program, you're brilliant. Of course you have a program on it. But the agility with that emotional intelligence, I think that is here to stay because people now know our global world has opened up because of the, 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 um, advancement of technology, like Zoom. I wish I had Zoom. I wish I had bought that stock in 2019, you know, look at it now and they just make it better and better and better with breakouts and different right. things that us as, as, uh, having groups of people that we coach and train, et cetera. You could do everything you do live. We can now do in this very two-dimensional world. So emotional intelligence is, is it's, a, it's cool, right, to be part of that. But your emotional intelligence, you really need to hone that skill. So I love that you created a program because I do agree with you. I think that's an important skill that has now kind of was okay because we were live. Now it's it's amplified, right? The light is really shining on it, that that's a skill that's, it's not a, if you could, it's a must have. Um, and it well, is a tangible skill to learn. And I've said, I've said this for years, but you know, I, I think about the soft skills, uh, Connie, and yeah. you know, a lot of times people think that the soft skills are, are not that important. And I actually think the soft skills are the hardest. Um, and, but they're also, um, they also carry the most reward. So if you are developing your skills um, in communication and in emotional intelligence in um, human interaction, in your interpersonal skills, if you're developing that side of your leadership, um, you're going to go a lot further, a lot faster with your team. Agreed. So it does pay off uh, and it is worthy of the investment. I agree. And it's funny, you know, you were talking about that organization, you know, my seven step process, you know, based on the international bestselling book, uh, but my ESP, right? The ESP, we do have to have ESP, that extra sensory perception with everyone we deal with, right? Especially our clients. But my easy sales process, step one is exactly that, that preparation, getting your mindset, right? What, what is your organizational skills? What is the emotional? T what are all of those pieces of the puzzle that we need to learn? before you can execute the process. So it really starts with all of that internal um, mechanisms and working. So I love that, that, um, yeah, y y we have to bring all of those soft skills forward um, because we're, and, and like you, sales is a part of everyone's job. Even if you work in a back mm -hmm. office, you're still selling yourself to get promoted. So soft skills are real and they're going to help you get noticed. And I think kind of fast forward the results that you're looking for. So I, yeah, I agree with you a hundred percent. And they are, they still soft skills are harder to, they're not as tangible as product knowledge, let's say, or learning a system, a CRM system, right? Um, but they're still tangible that you can work on. And there's enough programs like yours, the agility um, with, with that emotional intelligence, there's programs to help you develop it. So there's really no excuse, right? What, what do you think is the best way for leaders and, and maybe organizations um, to invest in themselves and their people right now. So maybe that's the piece, that's the next piece of our conversation. And, you know, how can you, or how are you helping your clients, right? That agility, emotional intelligence, but what are some of the other things you see a need for as we continue down 2021? Well, I think the most important thing is, is just to recognize that there is an ongoing need for growth and development. Um, I, I think there were organizations, and you mentioned this, you know, early on last year that, that kind of abandoned their training and development program or their training and development budget. And, you know, that made perfect sense because they had other priorities and just trying to survive. And then, and then also they didn't know, you know, what the financial impact to the organization was going to be. So everyone needed to retrench. Great. But I think that now we're in a new year um, and we kind of have the routine stuff under our belt. You know, we know how we have to operate. 
Um, we're feeling a little more agile. Um, we're a little bit more adaptable. I think um, if you if you stop making an investment in growth and development, you, you need to you need to really think hard about that. And and along with that, you know, just having a plan. You know, what what's important in your organization right now? What do you need to focus on? And let's make sure that we are. Um, you know, we have a plan in place to, to 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 train people, to develop people, to give people the skills they need, to give them the outlook and the mindset that they need, to, to help them with the actions and the habits and the practices that they need to be successful. So, um, you know, having some kind of a plan, I think, is, is the most. And there's so much available. So, you know, take advantage of what's out there. There's there's um, a lot of online stuff now. You know, you've, you've created you've created an online program from something that you probably wouldn't have even thought about creating an online yeah. program for in the yeah. past. Yeah. Um, I've created online programs. Most of everything that I do in a group can be done virtually now. Um, and, and it's, and I would say it's, it's equally as effective. I mean, you know, it's been redesigned to be um, still experiential and, and interactive. And so um, there's a lot of really good, you know, there's a lot of really good programs out there. So take advantage of uh, of those, and you know, like I said, have a plan for what you what you need, and get some and get some expert help and advice for um, setting that up in your organization. Have you seen some of your clients abandon um, the training and development? I know my some of my clients are still in that wait and see. And my, of course, my opinion, and, and not just because that's what I do, but it's just what our conversation's about today. It's dangerous because the world is moving forward and the people right. who are gaining skill in this new kind of two-dimensional, you know, environment, they're going to be way ahead of the game if you retract that training and development and keeping your people relevant. And then I, I just have a new client I signed and they're being very proactive, taking advantage, thinking, whoa, we got to do more for our employees. So it's just so interesting to see how my clients are kind of shifting, some retracting and some are like, holy smoke a we better, we really better uh, put the pedal to the metal with, the, with helping our employees. What are you seeing with your clients? The kind of a combination too? Very similar, same thing. I think that a lot of um, clients are still in the retrench mode because um, mm -hmm. they want to be, you know, super careful of, with their finances, and that's understandable. Of course, but you know, you have to equip your team for success, and you know, it's easy to fall behind. Um, you know, we we live in a very fast-paced world. You know, things move quickly, and we've seen that. Uh, we've certainly seen that in the last year, and so you have to you have to invest just to keep even. And if you want to be, you know, if you want to have a competitive advantage, you have to work even harder at it. And I still maintain after all these years working in business, that one of the best competitive advantages that you can have in your organization is a cohesive, fully engaged, high performing team. And whether that's in sales or any other part Doesn't of the matter. organization, yeah. when you have people that can, collaborate and work together to get things done, um, that gives you a competitive advantage. And I think it's, it's one that's hard to um, replicate by other companies. And so, and it's one that requires, I would call it ongoing investment. It may, it may be an external investment, like so, using someone like me or someone like you, but I'm even thinking that it's an investment of the leader's time, energy, and attention 100%. to make sure that people are, you know, are, are focused on, um, you know, working together, collaborating together, making good, making good um, decisions, finding better solutions because they're because they're they're cohesive and they're and they're able to um, interact with each other in a way that um, has you know has a basis in trust and their uh, ability to um, interact with each other with despite conflict and and their ability to hold people accountable you know, to each other and, and to results. And so working on that stuff, I think is, um, never goes out of style, but I, I believe it's more important than ever. Yeah. I, I think the back to basics is, 
is screaming at organizations that didn't do it. Now they have to do it. And if you were doing it, it's almost like you have to up your game even further. And you cover a lot of that in your book, Becoming Deliberate, right? Changing the game of leadership from the inside out. And I think it's happening more from the inside out than ever before uh, because we're, 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 we're still segregated, right? We're still very separated from our teams in a lot of ways, you know, 25% capacity in, in some buildings and, and things like that. So, you know, it's really got to start from the inside out. And it, it, you just, you made me think of something. I was on a coaching call, a, a group coaching call with uh, someone I hired last year, a business coach. He, he's an expert in the four pillars of, th- of authority, right? And it was funny, so two things. When I first sat through his, uh, he had a three-day event virtually, and um, someone had introduced us. So I, I said, you know, I was in learn mode last year. I think every weekend, Cheryl, I, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was, you know, eight hours, nine hours in training plus doing all my work. So I was putting in 70, 80 hours a week, which is so funny because I wasn't training, but I was, I had so much I was creating and really learning because I thought, wow, it's a deficit. That's a deficit. That's a deficit. I need to learn about that. And do I want to make that part of my new business model? But anyway, his name is Michael Neely. And um, so I sat through and I went up, uh, we were about three hours in and I went upstairs and my husband said, so are you learning? And I looked at him and I said, oh my goodness, the four pillars of authority, here they are. Having a podcast, eight years podcast. Second thing was uh, publishing a book, international bestseller three times. Next one was uh, create a business online curriculum have that right 20 years i have probably 30 programs created um and then the last one what's the fourth pillar uh it's escaping me now but i had all four right so i i went upstairs and my husband said so and i said i'm in the jar and the directions are on the outside I have all of the four pillars of authority. None of them are talking to each other. None of them are working cohesively. So you hear as a business owner, you need to publish a book. You need to create curriculum. Been in business 20 years, right? You need to do do a podcast. I have two podcasts now. They weren't talking to each other. So it's that, you know, you're 98% there. What about that 1%, right? I was missing that 1%. So yes, was money tight? Yes. Did I still invest? Yes. So we were, so this is the point of that story. We were in our group coaching this week and and one of the women said, I don't have money to do that right now. And I just hired someone to help me with my webinar, to help me with the email sequence and then the actual script for the webinar. So I get the conversions. I know my stuff is good, right, Cheryl? You know me. I I over deliver. I know that. But if people that are sitting through the webinar are like, oh, another stupid webinar, it's the same information. What differentiates her? So I know I have to spend the money to hire someone. And it was funny because I said to this peer, penny wise, you know, dollar foolish, that if you spend this X amount up front, what will that translate to on the back end that you're leaving on the table? See, that's my sales mentality. What are we leaving on the table? So it's the same thing we're talking about. Those that are thinking, oh, I better not spend the money. And I'm not saying you should spend money frivolously. Really think about, though, your people are the ones who are going to drive business and build more clients and and drive the revenue, right? And that's what we're talking about. And if your leaders aren't equipped to to lead that in this world, you're you're in trouble. Your business is going to be in trouble. Well, to me, it's the difference between thinking of it as an expense and thinking of it as an investment. And I think that's true whether you're talking about marketing or sales or um, training, you know, development of your team. You know, it's an investment. And like any other investment, you need to get a return on the investment. 100%. And, you know, I think that when you um, when you invest in training, you should have a you should have clarity, you know, a clear idea of what outcome you're going to get from that. You know, what's going to be, you know, what's going to be the return? You know, what can I expect as a result of, you know, spending this money, spending this time, you know, taking people's time to be, Agreed. you know, to be on a webinar or on a, on a training or on a Zoom or whatever it is. And so, you know, there needs to be clarity around that. And I think that's something that, you know, we as you know, trainers and providers of online um, programs and content have an obligation to, to share with people, like, here's what you can expect from this. Absolutely. 
Yeah. It's always yeah. about, see, again, I'm um, results. What's the return on the investment? There better result, better be a dollar result. Otherwise, why are we spending this time and money? There has to be something at the finish line. Otherwise, we're wasting time and energy. For what? Like, what's the purpose of that? Last question. We're out of time. I have to ask, what, what, because I trust you and I trust your advice. I think you're brilliant. What advice do you have for the listeners um, for that continued growth and development for 2021? If you had to pick one or two key things, what would, what would be that mm. focus? Well, you know, just to kind of summarize a lot of the things we've been talking about, I think, you know, have real clarity around what your, what your needs are, what your development needs are, and have a plan to achieve that. And, you know, and don't hesitate to get um, expert help with that. Like, I, I, have, I have spent, um, well, quite a bit of time in the last, especially six months with people, helping them frame up, like, what their priorities are around training and development. Um, and, you know, and my thought process is, look, whether I'm part of it or not, I, re I really want you to have a plan. And, you know, number one. Number two, know what's available. And, you know, the, the, the help that an expert can give you in this is they can ask the right questions to help you gain clarity around, um, you know, what order, if you have a lot of challenges or a lot of problems in your organization, what do you, what do you tackle first? And in, and, and in what order do you proceed? Because there's any number of things that you can do. There's any number of directions you can go. Um, let's make sure that you're focusing on the things that are going to move the needle the most for you, your organization and your team. And you have blind spots, right? My story with, with hiring Michael Neely, um, I was doing everything that I was told to do that I had learned. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I was still inside the jar and the directions were still on the outside. Right? So that, that visual, when I, when someone said that to me, I'm like, yes, that's what it felt like. And until someone says, Hey, I was like, holy crap, I missed that linchpin with those four things that I am pillars of authority on. You don't know what you don't know. And, and if you think you don't have blind spots, you're crazy because I still have blind spots. I don't know what they are because they're blind spots, <laughs> right? And that's, true. that's the truth of, of just seeking expert advice, whether it's Cheryl, myself, or someone else. Let someone else take a peek and really start to uncover what those potential blind spots are. Because the d danger is the blind spots are costing you time and money and could be costing you qualified employees that are leaving and going somewhere else because you don't even realize you're not giving them what they need uh, because you're not leading them properly, right? And there's, that's another little hidden danger that we think, why did they leave? who knows, but you really want, you know, somebody like a Cheryl looking at that to make sure that you're, you're, you're covering your blind spots, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No question about it. So guys, I know you need more Ellen, uh, Cheryl in your life. I need more Cheryl in my life. That's why we don't get together enough, but go to Ellis business enterprises, plural.com. She has a ton of information and resources. Also, I'm going to put a link. Um, you have five free gifts, right? In, in, yeah, in that. this is something I something I did at the end of the year, and it's um, you know I, I would invite your listeners to go to the link links. Um, there's one for each gift, and you know they can get all five of them, or you know one, two, three of them, whatever they find is helpful. Um, if you if we have time, I can quickly describe what they are. If, Why if don't you do that? But and I'll put the link. But tell them what the five gifts are because I think they're all, all right, wonderful. So, yeah, one of them is an is a assessment tool that I use. Um, I, I did it because it was the end of the year, but it's something that can be used anytime, and it's just a reflection on um, what habits are kind of helping you and what habits are causing you to not move forward. Mm -hmm. So just a quick way to assess that. Um, another is a uh, is I guess my most requested guide, which is about overcoming negative thinking, mm. um, which has just been around for a while, but people keep requesting it. So I keep, I keep uh, putting it out there. Um, another one was actually my chapter from the book that you and I collaborated on because it's all about resilience. Absolutely. And I think that's a really important topic right now. Um, and then I get, Oh, I gave a list of my, some of the, some of my favorite books uh, in the personal development space over time. I do a lot of reading. I read about 50 books a year. So I have that list. And then last but not least um, was actually a, a five minute guided meditation that I did. I, I use this in the center for creative leadership when I teach meditation there. 
um, as a tool. And so I recorded a, a, just a quick guided meditation that people can use to just kind of center and um, calm down any time of the day. All five are great, by the way. I have been exposed to all of them. <laughs> hey, I know what resources are good and move the needle. So I'm I'm all tapped into that, right? Dialed into to yes, my friend absolutely. Cheryl. So yeah, and guys, I promise I'll put the five free gifts. There's one link and then there, the five are right under that link and I will put them on the show notes. So that number one, you can find Cheryl, but number two, you can find those gifts because they really are all really priceless, um, priceless gifts. So thank you for offering that to uh, my listeners. My pleasure. Yeah, I, I always appreciate that. And of course, if you need more me, which I hope you do, everything is on my website. Just go to WhitmanAssos.com, easy peasy. I have a resource page like Cheryl, several free things that are downloadable for you um, to be able to help you dial into changing that mindset on sales so that you become productive, but you come from this place of love, care, and respect. Because if you're not selling from a place of love, care, and respect, you're doing it wrong. You heard it here first. So WhitmanAssos.com. Um, Cheryl, thank you again. Just always such great content. I know we go over a little bit, but I do just feel like there's so much value in everything that you say. And I think you give tangible ideas. If somebody's overwhelmed, where do I start? I just feel like you always give such tangible ideas of start here, like breathe and start here. So thank you for always um, helping my listeners with that. My pleasure, Connie. Always fun to have our conversations together. You know, I love hanging out with you, my friend. And, (laughs) And I hope you will join me weekly as we question, build and discover together that being a heart centered leader, right? Um, the sales leader, Cheryl is a heart centered leader. Um, it really, you can easily grow and allow your teams to grow and create that profitability for Cheryl and I, it really is about the results and it's about that return on investment. Um, thanks for tuning in, uh, to the heart centered sales leader podcast with me, your heart centered sales leader, um, on webtalkradio.net. Have a wonderful week, everyone. And I really hope you open your mind to these paradigm shifts that Cheryl and I talked about so that you can move the needle in 2021. You can create ease and you can create wonderful results for you and your team. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you next week.